Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Mantaflow tutorial series. In this episode, we will be looking at materials and shading for liquid simulations, as well as how you can render out those spray, bubble, and foam particles. So, without any further ado, let's hop into Blender and get started. I've got a simulation set up here with my mesh baked out and some particles as well, since I want to touch on those in this video. The first thing we should figure out is how liquid works. If we look at some real world examples and read through some pages on math, we can see that liquid is generally very reflective but also refractive, meaning that light passes through and bounces around inside of the fluid, making it clear. Because of this refraction, we will be working in the Cycles Render Engine today. Because EV isn't all that great at this sort of stuff due to its non-ray traced nature. I will try to show some methods for faking this refraction in EV in future videos though. So then, what are the most basic shaders we can achieve this refraction effect with? Looking at the list, there is a clear first option, the refraction BSDF. If we set that down and connect it up, we can see that the light is passing through, but it looks incomplete, and that's because the refraction node is a building block to use with other shaders. To get a quick liquid shader with this, we'll want to plug a glossy BSDF into a mix shader with our refraction, and then use a Fresnel node as the factor, allowing us to mix these shaders based on an index of refraction, or IOR. This IOR is how much light and how fast that light will pass through the object, allowing us to calculate that and use that as mixing for our shader. So the next step would be to find the IOR of the liquid you are creating, plug that into the Fresnel node, and you are good to go. If you want to learn more about index of refraction and how this works, I'll try to link some stuff in the description down below. Now one thing about this is that it is kind of a lot of nodes for this simple setup. Luckily, you can actually replace this with just a principled BSDF node with a low roughness and turn the transmission all the way up, and it gives just about the same result. Either of these options will give us the same output, so it's essentially up to you to how you want to lay your nodes out and customize your shader. I usually prefer to go with the principled BSDF. I have also used the glass node before for this refraction, but it offers less customization and options than either of the previous methods, while not looking better than either one, so I can't exactly recommend that node. A thing to note is that nothing is perfectly reflective, so I'd recommend putting just a tad of roughness into that slider, and a little bit on the transmission roughness if you are using the principled BSDF. Now, let's talk about normals. Something that you can do is add a bit of detail through bump maps and things like that, but there are some extreme issues with this when applying it to a fluid. The main problem is that with a fluid simulation, the mesh is changing its topology every single frame, making it rather impossible to create a UV map for. That means we can't really have textures that flow with the fluid through the UV maps because we can't just map a texture onto its surface due to its topology. The one way I've found that gives a look somewhat like a flowing texture would be the normal output on the texture coordinate node. When using other outputs on the texture coordinate node, we can get some detail and texture added to the fluid surface, but as I've said, it can't flow instead just applying to the fluid on each given frame without dynamic movement. My recommendation for liquid shading is to carry out as much as you can with the fluid simulation itself, and then add in a bit of extra detail if absolutely necessary with a bump map. If you keep the focus off of the bump, then you can use it at a low strength for that extra detail. Now let's also talk about different types of particles. Once they are baked, the only control we really have over them is how they are rendered, but even that gives us quite a bit of power, as we'll soon see. If we again look at some real-world examples, we can see that all three of these particle types look and act very different from each other, so we'll need to reflect that with how we end up rendering them. Let's start with the bubbles. They have a lot of different shapes, and of course aren't perfectly round. We can't get bubbles like this in our simulation without going absolutely crazy with trapped air and physics calculations and resolution, so we'll just have to render as a collection with a bunch of different shapes, and of course, as per the usual, not get super close to our simulation. 
The object that I usually use for particles is the UV sphere or the icosphere, depending on how heavy my simulation is and how many particles are on each frame. UV spheres are smoother and allow for greater detail most of the time, but also generally take more performance to render. I'll throw a few spheres into a collection and then make edits to them to get a wide variety of different shapes. Some big, some small, some oblong, and some more jellyfish-like, just a bunch of wacky shapes. Then, you just go to the Particle Settings tab and select that collection under the Particle System. It's good to toggle on Pick Random to make the generation more random, and also, I usually toggle on Use Count, as this allows you to control how many of each particle there will be in relation to the other particles. With this, you can make sure that there are more small particles than big ones. You can also add in an object with no vertices and use the count number on that to decrease the amount of rendered particles if you don't have time to rebake. In terms of shading for bubbles, it's pretty simple. I usually use the same material as the fluid I'm shading and then just lower the alpha to 0.4 or 0.5 and sometimes tweak the roughness a bit. It looks pretty great and doesn't take very much time to set up since you've already got that liquid shader. Spray and foam particles are a lot more related than bubbles, so a lot of the time I end up rendering them as the same collection, or just duplicating the collection from one, tweaking the material, and using it for the other particle system. The process for setting up these collections is about the same as the bubbles with the random objects, but the material I use is a bit different. Because spray and foam particles will have more air inside of them, the material won't refract as much and will be rougher. I usually do a principled BSDF with a higher amount of roughness, a bit of transmission, and a relatively low alpha. All of these get tweaked a bunch as I add them in, and especially as I play with the lighting. Another slightly more performance-friendly method I use for particles is to render them as planes and use nodes to make them appear spherical. You can use a gradient node set to spherical with the object output of a texture coordinate, and now the plane renders as a flat circle. So long as you keep the camera far away, you can render these particles with only four vertices each. One last thing that frequently is a problem with these particles is their tendency to form grid-like patterns. It isn't all that easy to fix this while baking the simulation, but we can mitigate it quite a bit when rendering by using Shifty to duplicate the entire collection of particles, hopping into edit mode with all of them still selected, and then just rotate them all around a median point. You may have to do this a few times, but it can really break up this grid-like behavior. If this video helped you out, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel, and if you're feeling generous, go ahead and check out my Patreon at the first link in the description, where you can get some exclusive project files. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.